So we talked a little bit last Thursday about um, not lumber pricing, but about board feet and linear feet. And we did that board linear foot or board foot for linear foot conversion. And I know it was kind of foggy as to why we would want to do that. So let's go over an example of why we would want to do that. So let's say we've got a deck framed out here. Let's pretend my artwork isn't horrible. And of course, you know, you've got joists going across it, however. And let's say that this is a 24 foot by 16 foot deck. And we're going to put deck plank on this deck, running the long way. Now, there's one, one thing I did, um, and this isn't necessarily something part of the homework even, but 24 foot is what you call modular. <clears throat> modular is a dimension that's divisible by 4 feet. In fact, modular is a dimension that's divisible by units that you get your materials in. When we are framing joists, we put them 16 inches on center. So when you're dealing with 16 inches on center, it, I mean, you can get lumber in two-foot increments, right? You can get it 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. But you're putting joists 16 inches on center. That doesn't work out on the 10 and the 14. It only works out on the four-foot increments, the 8, the 12, and the 16. So when you're buying deck plank, you're going to be using 8, 12, or 16-foot deck plank. That's also, by the way, when you go to buy, a, if you buy a 10-foot deck plank, if you look at the price per linear foot, it's usually a couple of pennies cheaper because it's not modular. Therefore, there's not as many people who want them. So the, the price is a little bit lower. So if you have a project that you can use them, it's often slightly cheaper to use them. But anyway, it, this is modular. And because this is modular, that means I can build this with no waste. So if this were like 22 feet, then I would have to figure an extra four inches uh, for waste. And the reason it would be four inches of waste is because we're modular at 20 feet. So that extra two feet is 24 inches. There would be, actually we'd have to figure eight extra inches for waste. I'm sorry, I messed that up. There would be a joist at 16 and the next joist would be at 32 if you were figuring two foot, in, you know, for the, the modular. So that 32 inches would be eight inches past 32 minus 24 is 8 inches past the end of this. So you can't have it at 20 foot. It'd be 20 foot 8 would be where your your, your uh, deck plank would end. So if you cut that, the reason I'm saying that is if you cut that one off, you're not going to cut it off 8 inches long. You're going to cut it off at the edge. But when you go to reuse it on this end, it would be hanging over that 8 inches if you're going to have the end right on top of a joist. You can't have your end in between joists. It's got to be spliced on top of a joist. So when you go to start over on the next run, you're going to lose that 8 inches here. It's going to end up being cut off. Does that make sense? So if your dimensions are not modular, you have to look at your materials and you have to figure that in. Now, we're not doing estimating in here, but when you get into estimating, you are going to have to figure that, okay, the dimensions on this deck are such that I'm going to be forced to waste this much material. Now, we are using 5 quarter deck plank. That is thickness, of course. And when we're doing an estimate, we need to do an actual dimension. The actual dimensions on five quarter deck planes, five and a quarter inches thick, five and a half inches wide. So what we are going to do here is we are going to do a board footage calculation for this whole deck. Remember, a board foot is one foot square by one inch thick. So every square foot of a deck is a board foot if it's one inch thick. Well, this isn't one inch thick. It's five quarters inch thick, one and a quarter inches thick. So to find board feet for anything like that, you find the square footage Find your square feet, your surface area, and then you multiply 
by your thickness in inches. So for this here deck, our area is 24 feet by 16 feet. Which is going to give us what? 384, I think. Square feet. Okay, that's our square feet. Now we're going to find our board feet. Our board feet is step two. Take that area, 384 square feet times a thickness of five quarters of an inch. So we're going to take 384 times 5 divided by 4. So it's 480 board feet. Why is that 400? How do we use that 480 board feet now? Well, we're going to go back and we are going to calculate how many linear foot of deck plank we need. To do that, we need to find board feet for linear foot. <coughs> so we had one foot long, right? This is going to be five quarters inches thick, five and a half inches wide. So the volume, I'm going to make this 12 inches. So our volume here is 5 fourths, so 5 divided by 4, times 5 and a half, which is going to go 5.5, times 12, which gives us a volume of 82.5. Remember, to find board feet for linear foot, we divided that by what? What's a board foot? 144. We divide it by 144, so we get 0.57291667. That is, write it over here, board feet per linear foot, per foot. When you just see foot, it's implied linear feet. So how do we use that? Well, we have, this implies, but whenever you have a ratio like this, board feet per linear foot, that implies a conversion factor of 0.5729167 board feet equals one linear foot. So that can be used as a conversion factor, just like we did with our other measurements. And we said we needed 480 board feet. So if I write down my 480 board feet, which I found just by using a volume, I can use this conversion factor. What has to go on, what units has to go on bottom here? Board feet. So we're changing into linear feet. This is one linear foot is 0.5729167 board feet. Now, my calculator, I'm going to make my calculator do the work rather than punching that in. So I'm going to type in 480 divided by that previous answer. 837.82 linear feet. So I'd probably order 840, or well, probably order 850 linear feet just because you're going to mess up one plank somewhere, right? But there it is. That is your using that conversion of board feet for linear feet. And just remember, whenever you get this here little conversion, it means that many board feet equals one linear foot, one foot. Pretty slick. You guys want to see one more example of that? So you see how it works? Okay. <clears throat> Another way that can be used, and again, we're assuming a modular unit. Let's say you're looking at a house floor. Again, you got your floor joists or trusses, whatever, running. We're assuming it's modular on four feet. 
I'm going to give you 32 foot by 48 feet. Now, there are easier ways to calculate the number of sheets here, but we're going to do it using um, board feet and linear feet. We're going to assume you're using three quarter inch flooring, three quarter inches thick, right? One sheet. is four feet by eight feet by three quarters of an inch, right? Well, four by eight is 32 square feet times three quarters of an inch. Remember, it's support, your board feet is always square footage times thickness. So 32 times 0.75 or three quarters is 24 board feet. So that's one sheet is 24 board feet. So now we can go back here. We got 32 by 48. We are covering 1,536 square feet. We're going to multiply that by a thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. So we need 1,152 board feet. Well now we're going to convert that 1152 board feet into the number of sheets needed. Twenty two board feet equals one sheet. Board feet cancel out. That's saying eleven fifty two divided by twenty four. It's forty eight sheets. So it takes 48 sheets to cover that floor. Now there are easier ways to do that. I wanted to use that, that model for you so you can see it. Let's say you're going to do your walls of your house with tongue and groove. And you're going to do it slanted, which is the standard style for doing tongue and groove walls. I mean, some people will do it flat, but slanted is generally the, the preferred style. <coughs> so trying to measure it out length by length would be a real pain, right? But let's say your wall here is 8 feet by 18 feet. Now, this does not necessarily have to be modular because you don't have to necessarily splice on a stud. You deal with tongue and groove. Make sense? Especially since you're going diagonal. And let's say we are going to put in half inch tongue and groove. So the board feet to cover this wall is going to be equal to the area, which is 18 feet by 8 feet, which is going to be, what, 144 square feet? So we take 144 square feet times a half inch thick gives us 72 board feet. So take 72 board feet to cover this wall. We need to know our, our um, board feet per linear foot. So let's say our tongue and groove here. When we measure our tongue and groove, actually I'm going to draw the rest of this up. When we measure our tongue and groove here, um, <clears throat> where we measure it from is very important. We do not measure from here to here. Can you tell me why not? Yeah. Coverage. If this were being used externally, the phrase that is used is to the weather. You ever heard that phrase before? No? Okay. What that's saying is that's how much it's like for lap siding, they call it to the weather. Lap siding is the same way. Gosh, 
if I draw vertically, which is what I normally would set, right? It's going to set like that, right? So it does, it's not the, the dimension from, from here to here doesn't matter. What matters is the dimension from wherever that next one's going to, piece is going to cover it down to the bottom. That's what it's actually covering. That's its coverage. Same thing here. Its coverage is from here to however far it's going to sit into that, that groove, probably there. <coughs> so generally it's five and a half inches all the way across from the, the groove all the way out to the end of the tongue. So on this one we're going to assume five inches is going to be our exposure, coverage. So we're assuming a half inch penetration into the, the groove. Probably not quite that much, usually it's more like three eighths of an inch penetration. Um, but you also lose a lot with the milling process, so it's usually not typically the full five and a half, it's usually five and a quarter, five and three eighths, somewhere in there. And we said this is going to be a half inch thick and one foot or 12 inches long. So that volume there is going to be 0.5 times 5 times 12. It's going to give us 30. Now we're divide by 144 to make that into board feet. So that's 0 0.20833. 3. Board feet per foot. So board feet, that many board feet equals one linear foot. So we come back to our 72 up here. We need 72 board feet to cover that wall. Board feet go on bottom. Linear footers, regular feet go on top. So 72 divided by, again I'm going to do this the previous answer instead of punching in the point 20833. Gives me 345.6 linear feet. Of that tongue groove side. Now here there's going to be a waste factor involved. Let's say we're going to do I don't know. 15 percent for waste. What would I do? Well to add 15 percent for waste what we would do what? Well we could find 15 percent and then add it on, or I can do this. 15% per waste means I'm going to have the full amount, which is 100%, plus the waste, which is 15%, which means my total amount is going to be 115%. So I'm going to take my 345.6 times 1.15. Where'd the 1.15 come from? 115% of the decimal. Three ninety seven point four four. So I would probably be ordering four hundred linear feet of this of the tongue and groove. Now what about windows you might ask? What if there's a window in here? Very good question. What if there is? Well, let's say this is our window. Let's say it's a rather small window. So here's our tongue and groove going past it. Like that. This piece here, do we save anything there? No, we're still using the full piece, right? We're just cutting a piece out and throwing it away. Same here, right? How about this piece here? We're cutting out a section. What we could do is we could actually we could, we could cut it and then slide it up and start it over up here, right? But are we really saving much? Yeah, we're saving that length there. You know, 8, 10 inches maybe, depending on how big the window is. Same with this one. We can cut this one off and slide it up and start over, but again, we're only saving this shortest side. It's the only length we're saving. Normally what they do is they actually will have 
color, and I'm not going to get into it here. If you're going flat, it's a little bit smaller, but if you're going diagonal, it's a little bit larger. Like I've always figured any window less than three by four, so anything less than 12 square feet, I didn't even figure it in as a, being cut out because you're going to waste as much cutting around it as you are going to save by not having to cover the window. If that makes any sense. And everybody, and I'm, so like I said, I'm not going to give you any dimensions in here because it depends on what you're doing. For sheetrocking, again, well, what are you going to do with that piece of sheetrock? You've got to cut it out and throw it away so it's really nothing to save. Unless it's a window, like I said, bigger than three by four, then you might be able to cut out a piece big enough that you can use it somewhere. Um, so for the most part, for our purposes, we're not going to figure out anything safe for windows for those. But when you guys get into estimating, Chris may give you some sort of a formula for saving for those. Any questions? What I want to do is I want to give you the rest of the day today to work on that lumber pricing packet and that board measure packet. Concrete scaling, um, we're going to look at a little bit. If you can look ahead at that, tomorrow we will work on concrete scaling. Just uh, figuring out you know, how much concrete does it take to do a basement. There are some strategies we can use that shorten it up that are a little bit different. The packet just goes straight forward, the buy the book approach. I'll show you some things that you can use to make it a lot simpler. <clears throat> okay, we'll end it there for today.